Uh, hello again. Uh, this is David Birch at Star Path School of Navigation in Seattle, carrying on with part two of our uh, discussion of storm avoidance and maneuvering, and how to detect uh, you how to detect what's going on from the boat with your wind and barometer, wind instruments and barometer, assuming you don't have um, a lot of uh, communications or weather maps. If you have weather maps and informations and grid files, then you would do this all with that data, which is going to be much more precise. However, you still need to get know how to get some of this data, which is not that obvious. So we will have another video sometime soon or put it in an article. Actually, it'll go in the article. And, um, and that will give uh, more specifics and real links. And you'll see here what the, what the subtleties are. Um, actually, though, before I do that, let me go back to that book. And then this is the, our book. Uh, and I, um, I meant there was, an impli whoops, there was an implication in the last uh, video that uh, this, uh, this was a good book to look at to learn about these things, but I forget to mention that. So let me reference this textbook here, our textbook, on... Um, um, I say I always say our because I've got a whole team of people that help me with this stuff. I, I get my name on it here, but really there's a whole team of people that help me. That uh, so um, it's all this work is always referred to as we. But anyway, this book's available in multiple places and it covers these subjects. Although I must say we are adding some details here that will definitely go into the next edition. Some. So we've got some eye openers here about some real world matters that weren't weren't really covered as precisely as they should have been. We're a little bit too generalized in some cases, but you'll see that right now. Okay, so let's go back. Here's the case we're dealing with first. Then we're going to do a storm over here on the other side of the other ocean. But now we're looking. Look at this little guy. That's the weather map you get from the Ocean Prediction Center. That's not very, what is that? I mean, that's a trop, that means a hurricane. If it had a hole in it, I think it maybe means tropical storm. Um, but in this case, it's a hurricane. And, but you're not learning much from that. So that's a step one. This map alone here is really not telling you anything except you got something serious to deal with if you're somewhere in this part of the world. Generally, these things move this way, and then they likely go that way. This one, however, didn't really do that for a while, so it's sort of interesting. But that's another factor. Here is a hurricane, and if you're somewhere here and that's a map you've got, that's not much. But look what it says. It says on that map, C latest CPHC advisory, Central Pacific Hurricane Center. Now here's what's interesting. If that storm had been on this side of the line, like not where it is now, but this, this side of 140, that wouldn't have said that. It would have said, see latest NHC, National Hurricane Center Advisory. That's a little more familiar, and you may know what buttons to click. You know, you could Google NHC and get pretty directly right to what's there, but you're not Googling out in the ocean. So one of the, so this advisory is crucial information. That's what one needs, and it's available in various broadcasts, and more to the point, you can request this stuff that I'm going to show you by email, and we'll have another write-up that explains how you do that when you're a boat. So if you have your email, you can request this information. If you don't, then you're more back to the seat of the pants stuff that we're going to be looking at today. But we're looking at it not just with the generalities. We're looking about what really happens uh, or, you know, a pretty good approximation of what really happens. Anyway, this advisory here, look, is right here. Here's an example of one. And this is from the... Um, Central Pacific Hurricane Center in Honolulu. They share the same office with the Honolulu Forecast Office. And uh, same building, anyway. Um, this is number 17, it turns out. So if you were looking at National Hurricane Center, watching those beautiful maps of the, of the system develop and all the probability prediction curves and all those things are just nice, this thing fell off the face of the Earth on, Oct uh, on August 1st. It just disappears. It just disappears. It says, go see uh, this uh, other center if you want more information. 
And so you have to go to that center. But here's the here's a report, and here's what we care about for the time being. This I've skipped up to the about to where we're looking at. We're going to start on August 3rd at zero. Well, we're going to start on August 3rd at zero zero Zulu. But this is the closest report, and it tells us. Um, it tells us about the storm, the lowest pressure in the middle. Now, we're hopefully not going to be anywhere near the middle, but here's what we want to know. It's, going, it's moving direction 295, about 300, oh, oh, 300, I mean 300 degrees at 9 knots. So it's not moving very fast, not moving very fast right now. So, oops, I'll get rid of, oh, darn it. Let me get rid of that. Okay, uh, that's a live, live audio here. Or video. So um, here we go, uh, and this tells you the ver the radius. This tells you where the winds are, and let me come back later to explain what the these are important information and how to interpret these things. But right now, we just want to look at what this report looks like, and it tells you over several days where this storm's going to be and where the various winds are located at different speeds. So that's uh, that's the advisory you can get by email request. Now let's go look at how we're going to do the analysis, and we're going to use the uh, the program Expedition, a uh, very powerful uh, marine navigation and weather analysis and weather routing tool. It offers a lot of features that's valuable to us and uh, for this type of work. Or, frankly, for when you're underway, it'd be a pretty powerful tool as well. Um, so here we go. This is the position of the storm. And so what I've loaded is the GRIB files. I've gone, downloaded the pressure in the wind for five days every uh, few hours, um, every six hours, I think. Well, we'll see in a minute. And then, um, and then they're in this program. And so then I just, for a hypothetical case, in this case, I put us out here right about where the, uh, pressures, uh, the pressures are starting to get into the circular, uh, into the closed loop. But you could just as well be, uh, you know, you could just as well be further out here. Here's Hawaii, and here's this storm, like that. Um, but and then we have two cases. So I, and we're going to look at two cases. This is called Guillermo Dangerous Side, and it's 50 miles. It's a 50 miles off the track. Here's the track of the storm that we read from the other one. We read from the alert. Those, by the way, you don't even have sophisticated equipment. You don't need the shortwave radio, a, a yacht boy, or some equivalent shortwave transistor, uh, shortwave radio. Every hour will give you this information, the direction and speed of the storm. When one of these hurricanes are there, you get that from the shortwave radio broadcast. And that's a backup system. runs on batteries. Your whole boat could be lost electricity, everything. You just run a long wire, 50-foot wire off the end of that for an antenna, and then you get those broadcasts every hour. We have notes on that. Um, okay, so now here's the path of Guillermo, and here's where it is. That's a 24-hour path. From here, 12 hours, 24 hours. That's its predicted motion at this nine knots. And we pick the place. We say, let's, and well, where could we pick? Any place. You pick any place. You could be any place. And the more you're watching the weather, the more you would uh, maybe choose a judicious place to be. But these are serious systems. There's a 70, 80 knots of wind. Now, it doesn't show it here. That's another factor, and we cover that in another video. This is the global forecast system, GFS prediction of this storm. It's, it's good enough for us to illustrate our point now. In fact, it's beautiful for that. And look at this. Here we have isobars. We have winds. We have everything. Nothing like what we were looking at like uh, here. Here, where was that? That, look at that. That's not, you can't tell anything from that. So he, this, the fact that this may be wrong a little bit and maybe not strong enough or maybe the position's wrong or speed's a little bit wrong, but it's going to be so much better than nothing at all that um, uh, it's worth having, a, having a, some access to that kind of weather data, if you can, on the boat, which is, which is not hard. You don't necessarily need this sophisticated program to get this information. You can get on very simple programs. But now, so we put two arbitrary places. Here's a Guermo. Here's our boat. Here's our boat 50 miles off on the uh, so-called navigable side, safe navigable side. And here's a boat 50 miles off on the dangerous side. And here's the low, and here's where we are, and here's the storm. Two, and we, I just put us out 200 miles ahead. We happen to be 200 miles ahead of that storm, which, 
according to the speed they forecasted. And by the way, these forecasts from the Hurricane Center and the other centers are really remarkably good, remarkably good. So this hurricane is going to be somewhere around here in 24 hours. That we know. So we don't probably don't want to stay right here. You know, we want to do something. Um, now, how do we evaluate, uh, how do we evaluate uh, what's going on? Um, we do this. Um, I'm going to then just start marching. This weather is zero, zero. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the, okay, I'm going to put this little tool tip. I'm going to read the winds right here. So right now at this point, the wind is direction 40 degrees, 17.5 knots, and the barometer is 1007.9, uh, right? That's on this, on this side at that moment. Up here, the barometer is 1008.5, uh, and the wind is 45 degrees, 16.6. Uh, you see, that's what it is at zero, zero. Then I just bounce this guy forward. Now, that's six, six hours. I just bounce, whoops, yeah, I just bounced it forward six hours. Now, so I, so I write down at six hours later, the wind, the wind here is going to be 035 at 16.4, and up here it'll be... Uh, 055 at 20.7, a barometer 7.9. 7 now, so the whole idea is then we step through that whole thing. We go step, 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 and now we're back to that team, several people doing this, and we do it every, every hour or so. And then we get, you know, click in this uh, case here. Then we get this data, which is uh, like here, and then it entered that data. So here, here we have all the data for the time from the zero to 30 hours. The true wind speed, the true wind, uh, true wind direction, true wind speed, and the pressure. Note something very important here. You do need the true wind direction. True wind direction. You can't use apparent wind, and you can't use true wind angle, because all those things depend on which way you're headed and how fast you're going and things like that. So you have to... To do this analysis, to do this analysis of what's the wind doing, is it veering, is it backing, is it getting whatever, you have to, co you have to convert your observations to true wind direction and true wind speed. So here's the pressure on both sides of the storm, and then these are plotted up here, plotted up. So what do we have here? Let's go to the navigable side, and the pressure is going down like that. It looks like it reached a low around um, 20 hours and then went back up. So that's a storm kind of going by you in a sense. And then what happened to your wind? In this case, look over on the navigable side. We just had 15, 20, knot, 15, 20 knots of wind the whole time as it went by. So you were navigable. Um, and the wind direction, here's the important, here's the important point. What, look at what these numbers are. From here down, it's going three, uh, 360, that's due north, then 330, then 300, then 270. This wind is backing. But notice, it didn't back right away. It was just sitting there straight. We had to go all the way up to 15 hours into that storm. So let's go back here. Where is that here? 15 hours. That's 6, 12, 13, 14, 15. So you're here. You're here, and there's a storm. So that wind, that storm went all the way from, um, from here to here, and that wind on this side wasn't, wasn't backing. It wasn't backing till it got to here. It was more or less steady. Okay, so you have to keep in mind that these guidelines about the veering side and the backing side are a little, they're a textbook picture of what happens when you're in a nice, clean, circular pattern like that. Now let's go back. Uh, where are we? Uh, here. No, no, we're here. Now on the other side, on the dangerous side, on the other hand, we were at 40, 50, 60, 70, you see this wind on the dangerous side very clearly warned us what was going on, right? Now, we're not moving. This boat's not moving. It's just sitting there. Say, like you hove to. Say, I'm going to just yeah, hove to and wait and see what happens. Well, in the next video, we're going to probably look at, uh, no, uh, going to be the third video, actually. Um, uh, well, or the fourth. Uh, you may not want to just sit there.
if you're that close. But anyway, look at what you're seeing at that two, at 200 miles off as this storm approaches. You're seeing your pressures going down here. Your pressures dropping 1009, 1006, and then we're well. Once you're once you're down like this two uh, two two millibars down to here. Uh, the normal, you're, you're well in, you have a warning anyway that something's going on. That's way out of the statistics for that part of the world. You get that low, something's going on. It's not just the noise of the various random pressure changes. That's another subject. But anyway, so you see the pressure going down. And then here the storm's apparently going by. And then the wind, the wind here. Now, we're lucky. We were, in this case, not in the really strongest part of the... Oh, no, actually, excuse me. We weren't lucky. What happens is this system was diminishing by then. It actually diminished. It, so if we looked at our... If we did this in front of a real hurricane, it was just building, building, rather than diminishing. This wouldn't do this. This would go at 50 miles off. You're just right on the edge of the eye. You know, so it's going to be nasty. Uh, but in this case, the whole system was diminishing, but we still got 45 some knots here on that dangerous side sitting there, that path. But here's the main thing. On that side, that wind was uh, veering. Uh, let's see, what's it? 40, 50, 60. Veering. I always have to kind of point my hand in one direction, then keep rotating it to see if, if I'm turning right or turning left. Okay, so that's the, that's the message. That's all I wanted to show for right now. And it's mainly this factor here that you have to keep in mind that the wind won't necessarily, from a distance, start uh, backing or veering. You know, it's going to, you, you have to get into the closed isobars, into the closed isobars. And also, you want the pressure going down. So you see, here's another case. This pressure really wasn't changing here very much. So that, you see that? No veering, pressure wasn't changing. The thing was just kind of like sliding by you. It was sliding by you. So the pressure wasn't changing, wind wasn't changing, and the direction of the wind wasn't changing. But as soon as that pressure started going down like that, and you're nice in that closed, closed isobar, circular motion, then the wind will start behaving in these veers and backing as, uh, as in the textbooks. So we have to keep in mind the difference between the textbook picture of what one phrase you might read in a textbook and the real world of how it confronts you. And I'll stop there on this, uh, this video.